Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast, the place to be to look and feel your best at any age or how many years wise you are. And in today's episode, we have a dear friend of mine. We have Sarah Felipe here. She is, her and I have been connected for a number of years now. She's an expert in breast implant illness. And I get a lot of questions about rejuvenation. How can we do it in a healthy way? Is it healthy? So this is going to be a really great episode to dive into those really important concepts. And of course, I love to take the angle of skin health first and foremost. We will look our best when we also feel our best. So Sarah has a passion for restoring health that has taken her along a path from RN to becoming a certified functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner, board certified holistic health practitioner, and breast implant illness and detox expert. Sarah has recently also become certified in limbic system rewire to support her clients in healing limbic impairment. She believes the solution to reversing breast implant illness is about more than just the explant and that we all need to take personal responsibility for restoring our health by addressing all of the root causes that contribute to chronic illness. It is Sarah's belief that the body has an innate desire to heal given what it needs. And she focuses on healing women on how to unlock that innate intelligence and heal themselves. And you can learn all about Sarah over at reversingbreastimplantillness.com. Welcome to the show, Sarah. How are you today? I'm lovely. Thank you so much for that introduction. And I'm just happy to be back for a second time with you. Absolutely. And for everyone tuning in, Sarah is so incredibly beautiful. And you know she's also interested in skin health and all that fun stuff. And you know, we've been working together for a number of years. And I, it really means a lot, someone like you appreciating my approach as well to skin health. It's not just about injectables. It's not just about laser. It's really how we live and how consistent we are with our routines. So thank you so much from my heart for the work that you do. It's very important now more than ever. My question I have for you to start things off with, this is the unlimited bajillion dollar question. What is radiance to you? So radiance, I would say is for me is about kind of that just being your authentic self, letting your kind of your light shine from within. And it's really about how you not only look and feel, but how you show up in the world, how you treat other people um, and the impact that you're making in others' lives. Oh, I love it. I have a very similar angle to that. And I relate to that to you before we record is that the more of us who are operating in this clear and pure and healthy state Number one, we're going to feel better. We're going to have more energy. We're going to look better. And we're also going to have better relationships with ourselves and others and better interactions. So for all of you tuning in here, no, it's not just about the superficial. It really is my mission to help other people be radiant, which actually in Ayurveda is the electromagnetic projection. And it's the 10th body in Ayurveda. Isn't that interesting? But Ayurveda actually has a definition for radiance. Oh, wow. That is interesting. It was a big aha moment for me. It's like, how do I convey this concept of radiance, give some structure to it, right? Some background. I would love for you to get into the limbic system impairment. This is something new for you to be talking about. And it's really important that everybody know about this for those who have breast implants or have explanted, but even just those who have gone through a tough time in life what happens to the limbic system? What is it first? And what happens to the brain and the body when the limbic system needs a little extra support? What are some of those signs? Okay, so I wanna start off just kind of a little bit of like background on this topic. So uh, first off, as you know, you know, my philosophy has always been to really get to the underlying causes of people's symptoms and address those so that we can experience you know, not just a Band-Aid, but lasting healing. And so things like, of course, breast implants and other implantable devices, things like heavy Like fillers? Yeah, fillers. Yeah, fillers are an implant, legitimately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
heavy metals, different environmental, industrial toxins, mold, lime, co-infections, things like cavitations, and then mental, emotional, and even sexual trauma can impact the body in a number of ways. And this is where most root causes lie in these types of things. And so many people do achieve their health goals when we address those issues properly and in the right order. I think order is really important. Um, but what most people don't know is that some people do address all of those things yet still experience symptoms and they just can't seem to get better. And that can be really frustrating, right? And leaving someone feeling like they're just going to have to learn to deal with all of these symptoms and live with it for the rest of their lives. Um, and, and feeling like what they're dealing with maybe is not solvable or reversible. And so even after addressing all of the root causes, some people just get stuck for because of the limbic impairment. Um, and so you see, you can remove, you know, different stressors or threats on the body, but the limbic system will remember that threat or threats, and it continues to respond as if it's still present, as if that danger is still present due to actually the perception of the experience and your reaction to it. So that, that perception of it and the reaction to it is actually what causes the brain to become a little impaired in the sense that anytime you have a trigger that reminds your brain and body of that event, the same unique kind of cocktail of stress hormones and neurotransmitters will be flooding the body and it just puts you into that fight, flight, freeze position all over again. And that actually leads to chronic symptoms. So not, that's not to say that the limbic impairment is the only reason that people are, you know, dealing with chronic health issues, but if you're not making progress and if you really addressed all the root causes, that can be a reason why is because you haven't actually worked on healing the brain and its perception of that event or those events. If, mm -hmm. Does that make sense? <laughs> yes, absolutely. I'm, I'm going to add something to that. So in my paper on oxidative stress status and its impacts on skin aging, which all of you can read, it's open source. I warmly invite you to read it. I wrote it to be understood by both the client and the clinician because that's who I serve. And you can just find that research article. Go to my research tab at theschoolofradiance.com. It's the most recent article up there. And what happens, you mentioned threats, you mentioned environmental toxins, what happens to someone's oxidative stress status or toxic bucket is it can get too full. So say, for example, someone is considering rejuvenation or they've had rejuvenation and they're not really minimizing their exposure to toxins in air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, pathogens, big fan of clearing out yeast, fungi, mold, heavy metals, mm -hmm. and parasites, as you know. Mm -hmm. If those things are kept at bay, I do have the opinion that someone can tolerate rejuvenation, but the issue that we're seeing is people are getting rejuvenation or they have breast implants and they're not looking after themselves appropriately because those implants in and of itself, whether it's neuromodulators for fine lines and wrinkles or dermal fillers for revolumization or breast implants or even surgery in general, if people already have those running in the background, it's so key to take extra diligent care of themselves. Really, really, really important. So I'm so glad that you mentioned the threat response. I'm not meaning to stimulate everyone's limbic system of <laughs> listening to this by saying that, right. but knowledge is power. Yeah, really. It's really important. So what are some of the signs of the limbic system being impaired? And would you say that that's a later sign of toxicity? Because I know in the skin the skin and the eyes can show us elevated inflammation, usually within a couple of days to a couple of weeks of exposure to say pollen or animals or eating the wrong foods. How long does it take to present limbic system distress? And what does that distress look like in everyday life? Say for example, memory loss. Okay. I think it might be helpful if I address your question about what the limbic system is, and then I'll um, go a little bit deeper there as well. So, so for anyone who doesn't really understand what the limbic system is, it is a group of brain structures that can be found deep within the cerebral cortex of the brain. 
And it's thought to control our emotions and brain function related to instincts and our memories. And research has linked the limbic system to feelings of motivation, the fight flight response, hunger, um, production of certain hormones to help regulate the autonomic nervous system, et cetera, right? And when the limbic system becomes impaired after someone's had an accumulation of stressors in their lifetime, so it's not just one thing that's going to trigger this, um, it's a chronic maladaptive stress response that can affect the brain and then the body as a result. So this results from both the internal and the external stressors, like I talked about, um, and really impacts how we tolerate our emotions and how we perceive our experiences and, the, and we can develop unhealthy thinking patterns as a result. And so when the limbic system stops functioning optimally, several different body systems are going to be affected. So the sleep-wake cycle, hormonal systems, adrenals, appetite and metabolism, emotional health, and various different things like that. They can all be affected once the limbic system becomes impaired, leading to symptoms like food and supplement sensitivities. So I have lots of clients I've worked with who just can't tolerate anything, and they may be eating five foods, and that's all they can tolerate. Um, it leads to things like sound, smell, taste, and touch sensitivities, Wi-Fi sensitivity, brain fog, fatigue, headaches, memory problems, decreased focus, speech problems, fear, sadness, irritability, uh, pain and discomfort, dizziness, difficulty regulating body temperature, irregular heart rates, and digestive issues, and the list just keeps going on. So you know, as you can see, this actually does cross the line of lots of other medical diagnoses as well, right? So it can be really hard to pinpoint. People can often find themselves just focusing on the physical, you know, root causes and trying to address those root causes, but maybe not getting as far as they'd like to uh, because of the limbic impairment. Interesting. Just as you're listing off all of those sort of symptoms and no, this is not medical advice. This is educational mm -hmm. information only. If you think you have a medical condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician. Mm -hmm. I was going check, 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 check. Especially after those two car crashes, I experienced yeah. all of that. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? I took really good care of myself. And I did all the things that are in my research paper with purifying air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, and detoxing. I even did some work with you as well for testing. And the funny thing about, about my situation is I knew I was in a moldy home and just a life that was no longer serving me, which is hard to recognize if any of you out there can empathize. And I tested to have exposure to, I think it was three or four different types of mold and pesticides, which were directly related to the previous home I was in. And my heart, my body was just telling me on every level, leave. Yeah. And then I started to sauna a number of times a week. My body just said, get in that sauna, detox, take your supplements, take your adaptogens, take really good care of yourself, keep mm -hmm. the mind calm, focus on faith and prayer and, and all of that, be around great people. And uh, just to plug here for Organifi, Organifi is today's sponsor. And these honestly, I think really helped to, to save my life. Fully transparent. I really think that they did because consuming superfoods and adaptogens all day, every day with their green formula, their pure formula, red, gold, harmony, and then their glow for skin hydration, I think really kept my adrenals in check. And for those of you listening, go ahead and use promo code VARGA over at Organifi, spelled with an I at the end, dot com. Use that promo code and save 20%. So big shout out to Organifi for the sponsor of the show. And just wholeheartedly, that really helped me. But when people are, are in this stress response, they might not recognize it. We've, we've heard of the body keeps score, yeah. but I haven't ha ever heard anyone explain the limbic system as being the key sort of control mechanism for that. So what are some strategies that you can recommend? Obviously working with you. And actually, I really want to work with you on that too. I've, I've been working with you too. And what are some things that we can do today? And then what are some of the things that you can help people with? 
So when I work with a, a client on the limbic system, um, we're working on wiring out old wired loops, or, you know, you often hear the term owl um, when someone's describing that. Now, old wired loops are just those those uh, neural pathways that have been hardwired into our brain, and it comes from perceived trauma and uh, fear. And I truly also believe it comes from a disconnection from God, from, mm-hmm. from our creator. Amen, sister. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> You know, so we need to address the mindset. We need mm-hmm. to address your, you know, how you're thinking about trauma and things that have occurred in your life. We need to work on creating, developing more of a healing, healthy mindset rather than a sick mindset that kind of keeps you stuck in that place. We don't need to go through and talk about all the trauma though, right? Mm-hmm. Like that's not yeah. really what this is. You don't actually have to do that in most cases if you know the steps that are needed in order to actually wire out those old neural pathways and wire in new neural pathways for health and happiness, right? So, you know, most people, not most people, there are many people who are walking around tolerating this world just fine, right? Mm -hmm. And when someone's so reactive to everything around them, something's going on there, right? Something's wrong. Your alarm system is going off and we need to figure out why that's why it's going off and then work towards quieting that response. And that's really what this is about is quieting how the body's responding to that exposure, whether it's just the air we're breathing or (laughs) food we're eating or whatever it may be. Relationships, emotional aspects. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so many different things can be triggers for people to go into those old wired loops and go down kind of a rabbit hole of overanalyzing and body checking in some cases, um, you know, replaying events over and over and over in the head, maybe conversations, right, that they're worried about, they may loop over them. So it's really about the looping. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what gets keeps people stuck, because it's feeding that limbic impairment, it's feeding the perceived trauma. And so we need to wire all that out and really focus on telling the brain in specific ways that it's safe. And we don't need to be afraid anymore. And the threats are removed and it's okay. We it's safe to heal. Right. So how I have been trained to do that is really through, like I said, a lot of like working on shifting the mindset, Mm -hmm. really incorporating a lot of uh, visualization practices into your Mm -hmm. daily life, which I think is key. And it's not just something that you can do once a week, right? It has to be a daily practice. And um, because old wire loops are stubborn, they want to stay there. They, they don't want to be wired out. Your brain wants to hold on to what it knows to be true. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then, you know, doing additional things like not focusing on yourself. So taking care of others, you know, going out and taking the focus off of you, I think also helps with not dwelling and thinking about all the negative all of the time. It takes you out of yourself, right? Out of the focusing on yourself. So things like that, um, really working on uh, walking in faith, you know, uh, focusing on developing a stronger relationship with your creator, giving over that control, Mm -hmm. right? Because we don't actually have that much control. Like we can do all the right things and some people just don't seem to get better. And so when we let go of that and we release that control, we allow kind of our divine creator to step in and take over that healing, which I think is really important, (laughs) right? When we're so controlling over it all, it can be overwhelming. And it, I think that also feeds into the limbic impairment. Um, so those are just a couple of things that we focus on, but it's definitely not everything. There's a whole process and it takes quite some time to really, um, why it takes as long as it takes. Yeah, it takes, and it's like an ongoing life skill that is so important to cultivate at as early of an age as possible, actually, I think. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And then we work on changing, you know, how you're talking about yourself and how you're talking to yourself. I think that's, you know, your brain is listening. (laughs) So those are really important tools as well. 
Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for sharing all of those things. I know when I was going through a particularly stressful time, and I have actually fully transparent here, you know, still to this day, working through a lot of things. And as a number of you listening might really land with this, that nothing is a mistake. It's all part of the journey. Yeah. It just depends how you navigate that journey. And one of the things that I found in my most radiant clients that, you know, I teach these strategies and principles in the School of Radiance membership, which is a year long transformational container on all the things that I do behind the scenes personally, and that I've seen my most high vibe radiant clients doing. And, you know, if we can do it, you can too. So join the fun. But it really is about community and connection and confidence. And then the other angle I like to take is to be radiant, it requires sort of like this priestess style purification, body, mind, spirit, energy, as well as people, people, places, and things too. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned about myself and observing so many clients and that, you know, thousands of clients since 2011 is the more pure you are, the better able you are at hearing yourself, listening to yourself listening to what your body is trying to tell you. And if something is off, you're noticing, for example, that limbic system dysregulation, some issues around that, shaking, nervousness, inability to focus, even changes in your weight. Mm -hmm. Those are clear signs that you need to do something. You need to shift things and you need to learn new strategies. Because when we talk about stress, stress is actually a sign of being alive. Mm -hmm. So this is why what I love to learn about my more mature clients, typically ages 60 to 90, is that they sort of bit around the block. Yeah. You know, they can kind of roll with the punches a little bit better. Sure. And for myself, I grew up on a really small island. Still to this day, there's no Uber. (laughs) So I was really protected and, you know, then kind of went off and did my own thing and explored the world a little bit more. And learned that that was so valuable that I had that growing up and I was so protected, which I think has really given me a leg up. But the, when we are engaging with people, when we are doing certain types of work, living our life's mission, these are so important from a skill set perspective to help you navigate and negotiate through things. And then to really tune into your body with what it's telling you. So if you're not feeling good, don't do rejuvenation because your limbic system might be off or your oxidative stress status might be elevated and then focus more on skin health and all of that. Mm -hmm. And I'm curious, Sarah, if you were to think about some people that you know that, and compared to us who we take really good care of ourselves, nutrition, detoxing, biohacking, all that stuff, compared to people who say, just show up to a practitioner for Botox and fillers or surgery but they're not doing the inner work. They're not doing the health work. How do you find that they look compared to say yourself who you take such good care of yourself with your skin health routine and dermal rolling and all of that? What are you noticing in women who are you know, the same age as you or even younger that invest primarily in rejuvenation, but they don't do the inner stuff too? You know, what comes to mind is that they and I have many friends who do a lot of rejuvenation um, and, and they're not all living this kind of lifestyle, right? Like you and I live. And um, what I see is an impaired limbic system, to be quite mm. honest with you. You know, I'm not even thinking about the outward appearance. I'm thinking about the energy they exude mm-hmm. is different. Radiance. Right. Right. Radiance comes from purification. Right. And so there's that lack of radiance. I think that's a beautiful way to kind of sum it up and Mm -hmm. it's short and sweet, but you know, it gets down to the nitty gritty of, you know, they haven't worked on the internal terrain. And so from the inside, their body is probably sounding some alarms, right? And they're not necessarily listening to that. They're maybe just focused more on how they look on the outside. And the inside is really suffering. And that comes out in, in some cases, it comes out in how you look. I mean, sometimes it doesn't. Um, But in many cases, you can see that in how people communicate, Mm -hmm. um, how maybe open and vulnerable they are or aren't. 
um, how they interact with others, whether they're kind and warm and caring and joyful and all of those things or in the present moment. Yeah. In the present moment or whether they're just really stuck, you know, um, dwelling on certain things or focused on the things that don't really matter that aren't important in life, you know, so maybe just different priorities. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I really feel for people that, you know, statistically speaking, 50% of relationships end in divorce, very sad statistic. You know, in my opinion, it's all about faith, family, finances, and fun. (laughs) Right. Yeah. (laughs) Those are really, really key. And there's, there's so many things running in the background, whether it's social media, toxins in the food, air quality, EMFs, that, you know, I really feel for people that don't know about this information mm-hmm. and that don't know how good they can feel. That's key. I think most people don't know how good they can feel. You know, mm-hmm. um, they're just kind of living in this body that they've accepted this is how it is. And many people like to blame genetics. You know, on that's, that's the, the cop out. Yeah. <laughs> oh, my, my parents, my grandparents, out. everyone in my family has this. Well, maybe everyone in your family is living the same way. Right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so funny. You mentioned that my great grandmother was the second ordained female evangelical minister in Canada. Mm. I mean, that's in my background, you know, <laughs> spirituality. And then my great, great grandmother was a spiritualist from the UK. She was one of the first people to come over to Canada. So I have a pretty interesting spiritual background and lineage and then, you know, cancer on my mom's side, my sister's side, but really it was due to lifestyle. My, my dear mother working like the man in the house, right? The main breadwinner and, you know, bless her heart. She put me into a really good school and all that. There's just so many women who are listening that I've met with and men, this is really important for you to hear too. And something that's really come up in my life too, in looking and taking pretty, pretty good look at what's going on. Women are designed to push for a short period of time. Mm-hmm. Yes. Think of birth, right? And then women are meant to receive, and then they're going to be more in their feminine state. And so there's just so many women out there that they want to stay attractive to their husband. Mm-hmm. So, cause they feel like if they don't, their husband's just going to look at stuff online or look for another woman that's younger. So there's right. so much pressure for women to look a certain way or keep up with the Joneses. I've been doing a lot of traveling over the last couple of years. And what I notice is that in different cities, there's a different look. Yes, that is true. <laughs> Definitely true. Definitely true. Now a look that's never going to go out of style is healthy. That's very true. Yeah. So if you are feeling like you don't want to do injectables, you don't want to do plastic surgery, you want to focus on your health and accept and embrace some of the signs of aging. I kid you not. I see women in their nineties who, and I talk about this in my audible radiance, the new skin science. If you want to hear a little bit more about my story and my personal transformational journey, go ahead and download that. I recorded it myself with the beauty frequency playing in the background with some technology and it'll inspire you. But I just see so many women on in consultations who are really struggling and I identify really why they're wanting to meet with me as wanting to improve their appearances to find a new partner. Same with men. I work with a lot of men too. Yeah. And then in conversation, I pick up on so many different things in regards to their speech and brain fog Mm. and difficulty with recall and difficulty answering a question. They go off on this whole tangent. It's like they forget the question that was asked. Mm -hmm. And if we operate that way and we decide to not operate in a way that is going to be supportive for you being a leader and whatever you do, living your mission, I mean, the choice is really up to you. So what, after sharing some of the things that I mentioned, uh, what would you like to add to that? Oh, Rachel. I know we, we've gotten pretty heavy in this episode. It's good though. It's people need to hear these, these thoughts and conversations and just know that they're not alone. Yeah. Um, I don't know what to say to that. Are we, are, can we edit? 
<laughs> now this is real life. All right. So say, for example, when you're working with a woman and you're picking up on the brain fog. Yeah, yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious if in your work, you also ask about relationships because I do, because then I get the information, yeah. oh, they're working like a man. Yeah. They're the head of the household compared to other people who they are really there to serve the family and bring peace. I mean, at the end of the day, it's yeah. a highly feminine role. Yeah. Do you notice relationships and lifestyle also impacting the limbic system and people who have may maybe have higher rates of breast implant illness? I don't know specifically to breast implant illness, but in chronic conditions in general, I think, you know, um, first of all, as women, I agree with you. I don't think, well, I don't know if this is what you're saying or not, but you tell me what I'm hearing and I'm agree in agreement here is that women just were not designed to push, 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 and go, go, mm -hmm. go, 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 and do it all and be everything for everyone and, you know, go to work, raise kids, do all the extracurricular activities, you know, throw big parties for their kids' birthdays, you know, just doing everything. Keeping up with the down bills. Yeah. And doing it like think they need to keep up with the Joneses regarding those things. They see, you know, people on, on social media throwing these giant, beautiful parties or whatnot, thinking they bouncy have castles in the front yard. Yeah. And so they're trying to give their kids this life that is just so unrealistic in general, kind of setting them up for maybe disappointment in the future. But, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then it just really impacts their own body. Like it's just too much stress. We have such a very delicate, you know, unique set of hormones that I think is very easily impacted by stress in general. And, you know, we can't avoid stress in this world. That's not possible. sign of being alive. It's OK. Right. That's how you deal with it. But we get to choose how sometimes anyway, for, for some things we get to choose how much additional stress do we bring into our lives? Mm -hmm. You know, and I see that really impacting people in the sense of, you know, brain fog, um, their ability to really comprehend new information, their ability to retain what I'm telling them or or um, follow through on action items that I'm giving them. You know, there's so much overwhelm in their lives. They don't have the time to take care of themselves, you know, and so and I think it's kind of cliche to kind of go down that path of saying, well, you know, you got to take care of yourself first before you can be the best mom or wife you can be. I mean, yeah, of course, but nobody wants to hear that, right? Mm -hmm. Because they oftentimes just don't think they can change their circumstance. Oh, you absolutely can. The way that you live your life is completely up to you. Hello, we are sovereign beings. That's, I mean, that's also why. Yeah. So, I would actually love to have you back to talk a little bit more about opening up drainage pathways for detoxing, but I would love to give you a little bit of homework, Sarah, okay. because most of the listeners here are intuitive empaths and also most of the clients I work with have a specific blood type. And I think that there is a linkage with neurotransmitter activity, desire mm -hmm. to learn. So I'm not going to say what that blood type is, <laughs> but I'm curious if, uh, Sarah, I encourage you to, when you're working with clients, ask them what their blood types are. Okay. And if there's some type of blood type overlap with people who have higher rates of breast implant illness, I'm really curious about that. Mm. So that'll be kind of a part two. Look forward to having you back and talking more about that. So Sarah, as we wrap up, where can people find you? How can you work with them? And really, how do you serve? So you can find me at my website is reversingbreastimplantillness.com. Um, and I work with women one-on-one -on -one, uh, in a client practitioner relationship. I work with women in my group program, The Explant Reset. And I also have a little mini DIY course. If you, know, you wanna start there, at least try something on your own. Um, and uh, so those are kind of the three ways that people can have my guidance. Um, and you can find me on YouTube as well. There's a whole movement that I've started posting about mm -hmm. on YouTube. You sure have, sister. Yeah, it's a life beyond explant um, movement. And it's really lots of stories of women who've gone through this journey and kind of talking about their journey and where they are now. And it's very hopeful. I think it provides a lot of hope. So if you want to hear from other women and listen to their stories, you can do that there. Beautiful. That's been a huge theme for me over the last couple of years is hold the hope, yes. right? 
hold the line, hold the hope. So thank you so much, Sarah, for being on the show. Look forward to having you back. And everybody, Sarah is an angel. She is so skilled at what she does. And I just, I really love you and I love your work. So thank you for serving in the way that you do. And thank you everyone for tuning in to today's episode right here on the School of Radiance podcast. Learn more over at theschoolofradiance.com on all things skin care, how to use your products through tutorials, the deeper radiance layers in my membership, shop my favorite products. And if you haven't yet, check out my free 30 minute biohacking for the skin video. It's completely free. You're going to love it. I kind of review my paper a little bit, but lots of resources for you to check out and support you on your journey of becoming your most beautiful radiant selves for not only you, but those little ones are watching you. So live by example and be a leader. Love you all so much. And we'll see you again right here on the School of Radiance podcast.